It's going to be heck of shoddy. Oh, heck of shoddy. Heck of shoddy. You're welcome. You can steal that music. That's a bad word. Pekka? Shoddy. Pekka. Some of you will give me questions with answers. And we're in the unit limits. And there will never be a limit to be found. Okay? Some of you will start with the limit from the question and then never have a limit after that. These are all places where you will get annihilated on your test if you so choose to do that. So please pay attention and pay and go and make sure that you're doing what I'm doing. So there will be questions on plain old limits where when I give you the limit, you cannot give me the answer by direct substitution. Okay? So you substitute in, it will not work. So for example, 1a. If I put in 0, I'm going to run into problems, correct? Now, you can use t tables and approach from the left and the right of 0 and see what it's approaching. You can try that. If I say algebraically, though, that does not work. Also, t tables can get you close. But if the answer is like 1.7798 and then the other one's one point, what is that as a fraction? I don't know. Okay? So algebraically is the best. So for here, we are going to not write. I know you all did this. I guarantee you have because I've watched you all year long. And those of you I haven't watched probably, I would assume, are similar to the ones I have watched. Don't do the question out of the question. Rewrite the question. You don't have to try and squish it over here because you decided to work out of my typed version. The first thing you always do is you rewrite the question. This, my friends, is not new. I have been saying this all year like a broken record. Okay? Eventually, you will get on board. Okay, so the first time, the first thing you do, you rewrite the question. Then we can multiply by the conjugate. And write 2 plus t plus root 2. And then root 2 plus t plus root 2. And then we have to remember when it's a radical, which I'm probably going to give you one of these. I've given you one every single day. And then I give you a fractional one every single day. I give you one that's just a factor every single day. It's like not going to be hard to figure out exactly what type of question you're getting. Okay? Not like it's going to be crazy. Now, remember we multiply the conjugates with the things that are not conjugates we leave alone. alone. Because we want to get that t to cancel off. And if we distribute it in, we can't get it to cancel off. So there's me common error. Now look, crazy. I wrote out the first question. Do you see that? Yes. Then what am I going to put? An equal sign and a limit. It's going to be amazing. It is. If you do not have an equal sign and the word limit written again, you are wrong. I'm correct. No. Equal limit. It doesn't, it's not limit equal limit. Equal, so that would be equal limit. Okay, so the first one, the first one, the first one. You could get away with that, because, but you shouldn't, because you should be rewriting it. <laughs> All right, but you're not going to in the test, because you're going to rewrite it. Yes. Okay. Shh. Root t, 2 plus t over, and times root 2 plus t is 2 plus t. And then I get minus 2. If I want to show the work, I can. I can go minus, and then you just leave them separate multiplied. Because what's under radicals multiplies, what's outside radicals multiplies. And then we get plus. Guys, it's really annoying. Stop. And then minus root 2 times root 2 is minus 2. Now, these would cancel off. All over, rewrite this. Now, in the end, I told you whatever your trouble is, you should hopefully cancel it. Yeah? Do you have to show the real terms canceling off? Or? I'm showing it. Because in reality, you should be showing it. If you didn't, if they canceled off anyways, you would be okay. But if it shows algebraically, you want to show that in the spot. Um, if it's radicals, don't overthink it. Anything in front, you could just leave in brackets sitting in front. Anything underneath, you sitting underneath, they're going to cancel off anything. All right. Now, 2 minus 2. Guys, I can't the whole time put up with that. So you're going to stop, right? Cool. Okay. 
So we have a T on the top and a T on the bottom. They're going to cancel off, and I'm left with a 1 on the top. Once the problem is gone, do I have to keep writing limit? No. Do I have to keep writing the equal sign? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I'm going to have root 2 plus 0 plus root 2. People will try and skip this step. You should not be skipping this step because you are showing that you're putting t in 0. Like this is the whole deal. That was what you had to do. And so I'm going to get root 2 plus root 2, which is 2 root 2. Box it. Up here, if I wanted to, I could sum it up and say, oh, this answer is 1 over 2 root 2. And that's why you would leave it blank, because you can show it up there. Okay, the next one is a fraction one. Do you suppose I'll probably give you one with a fraction? Or do you think I'm just going to give you all nice polynomials? I'm not going to give you all nice polynomials. Not in a million years. Okay, so we are going to first rewrite the question. So I'm going to get limit as h approaches 0. I don't have to write an equal sign because I'm just rewriting the question. 4 over 2 plus h minus 2 um, divided by h. I need common denominators, so I'm going to multiply this one by nothing. If I want to multiply it by something, you so choose, you can put a what if it, you really feel like you need to. And then I multiply by 2 plus h. So now I write an equal sign, limit as h goes to 0, of 4 minus 4 minus 2h. So now I have a common denominator, 2 plus h. Full fraction, so then I can multiply by 1 over h. These cancel off. My h's cancel off. And now I can fill in because the problem is gone. So I get negative 2 over 2 plus 0, which is negative 1. Box it to be allowed to cross. You can write this as negative 1. All right. The bottom one, I wanted you to be able to express to me how you would get limits algebraically because some of you guys still want to draw a graph every single time to prove it. You have to be able to do it algebraically. Now remember, if it says from the left of 0, that just means you have to use the equation that is less than 0. If it says from the right of 0, you just have to use the equation that is greater than 0, right? From the left just means less than 0, from the right means greater than 0. So. If I have the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, I'm going to go equal sign if I want, or heck, following the tra tra trend, oh my gosh, I would rewrite it. So I'm going to get 0 from the left of g of x. Which g of x do I need to use? x cubed. All right. So, we need less than 0, so we're going to use the x cubed. So, I do this, right? I actually write that step. Did you write the step? No. Write that step. You can't just bypass it. You're showing them that you know that it's x cubed. And then in your next step, when you plug in the 0, the limit goes away. So, now you can go 0 cubed, which is 0. Now this one, I have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of g of x. Which equation am I going to use this time? x squared. x squared because I need 0 from the right, which means greater than 0, which means this equation. So I'm going to write that. Everyone should have that step checked because if you don't, you're losing marks. Don't come to me and be like, Mrs. Love, I didn't know. I'm going to go back to the recording on this date, the 13th, at 8.54, and I'm going to say, listen, Linda, I told you that you needed to do this, okay? So Linda's in here, so I can say that. Um, all right, then we have 0 squared, which is 0. Now, if we prove from the left and the right, we're approaching the same thing. What is this one? It's equal to? 0. So is the graph continuous there? Yes. Possibly. How do I prove continuity? That's fine. That's the F of 0 has to be the same thing. And we know it actually follows the same equation because, look, here's where the equal sign is, right? So I'm just side noting here. I'm just proving this to you. F of 0 would be 0 squared, which is 0. And then you could say it's continuous, correct? You'd say it's continuous. At x equals 0, why? What do I have to show to prove that it's continuous? 
the limit as x squared to zero of g of, of g of zero g of x equals Yep, it's pulling G of zero the whole time. Yeah. And how could you prove that it's not co uh, not continuous? Not continuous. They don't equal. Wow. So okay. if one of them, so if the limit doesn't exist or f of the value doesn't exist, it's done. Can't be continuous. Okay. All right. This one's one from the left. Which equation am I going to use? X squared because it's less than or equal to 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of g of x equals the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of x squared, which equals 1 squared, which equals 1. Then I'm going to do the one from the right. Which equation am I going to use for 1 from the right? The bottom one, because I need greater than 1. So then it's going to be the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, proving that I know which equation it is. I write it beside 1 plus 2x minus x squared. And then I'm going to plug 1 in to prove that I know what mathematics I'm doing. So I can plug it in because I have no problem. And so I get 2. So what do I know about the limit as x approaches 1? It doesn't exist because from the left it's approaching 1, from the right it's approaching 2, there's a jump discontinuity. Okay? So is the graph continuous at 1? No. 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 It's immediately done because the limit doesn't work. Is there f of 1 though? Does f of 1 exist? What is f of um, No. f of 1 doesn't. Because <laughs> this is a g graph. g of 1 exist? Where does g of 1 exist at? 1 because it has to follow this equation, right? So g of 1 is 1. The limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. They're not equal to each other, therefore it's not continuous, right? Okay, <clears throat> we're going to sketch the graph. So when we go to sketch this graph, we have three pieces. We have an x, and then our first one is x cubed when x is less than 0. So I'm going to use 0, negative 1, negative 2, 0 cubed is 0. Is it a closed dot or open dot? It's open because there's no equal to sign. So I go to 0, 0, and I put a blatantly open dot. Then I do negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So I have negative 1, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So your graph is going like this, which looks like a cubic function. So that's good. Then we have our next table, which is x and x squared between 0 and 1. So I can go 0. Seriously? 0, 0 0.5, and 1. 0 squared is 0. Is it a closed or open dot? Closed because there is an equal sign. So 0, 0 is my first one. And the closed dot trumps the open dot and fills it in. Correct? Do you see how I had an open dot, but now I filled it in? So that's helping me with continuity, correct? Okay. 0 0.5 squared, what's that? What's 0 0.5 squared? 0 so accurate, it's going to be right there. And then, um, 1 squared, which is 1, but is it an open or closed dot? Closed, because once again there's an equal sign, so 1, 1. So there's my little piece of my quadratic. And then I have this other 1 plus 2x minus x squared. So I put in a 1, 1, 2 times 1 minus 1 squared is 2. Close your open dot. 
open because it's not equal to, right? So I have 1, 2. And you should have an open dot there. Do you have an open dot? Let me put in a 2. 1 plus 2 times 2 minus 2 squared is 1. And then you keep sketching it. What are the rest of the coordinates? I ran out of one. It's a quadratic. Three and negative two? Yeah. Yeah. Four and negative three. 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 at x equals 1, but y. So we say the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x does not exist. And then we could say g of 1 equals what? 1. And then the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x does not equal g of 1. This needs to be stated every time you're stating continuity or discontinuity. Continuity, you would have an equal sign between those two. Discontinuity, you have a not equal sign between those two. So you should always show the limit and the value and then show that they equal or they don't equal. And then therefore it's continuous or therefore it's not continuous. Right? So, therefore, g of x is discontinuous at x equals 1. So every time you are asked continuity, you need to give me the limit, you need to give me the value at that, and then you have to tell me that they don't equal or they do equal, and then it's continuous or it's not. Do you see how there's the four things I need? If you're like, ah, I'll give you three. Not going to work. Ah, I'll give you one. Okay, cool. If you don't give me four, you don't get full marks. It's basically 0.25 each. Give me the limit, give me the value, saying they're equal or not equal to, and then the state. Okay? Then we're going to flip over. All right. Do you suppose I'm going to make you get these ones? Yes. This is leading us into the next unit, actually. Before they knew how to do power rule, quotient rule, chain rule, all the different rules that come into um, finding the first derivative, before that happened, we had to use this principle. Okay? It gets us the first derivative. So how we show that we're finding the first derivative, instead of f of x, we say f prime of x equals, okay? That shows the first derivative. The second derivative would have two primes. The third derivative would have three lines. Once they get to the fourth, they just write four and five and six. They stop doing the little dashes, but they do them for the first three, okay? So what we're doing is we're finding the first derivative, which is actually the tangent slope, which means nothing to you right now, which is totally okay. Just know that you are finding the first derivative when you're using this limit. And that's how they did it. That's how they figured it out. They thought, figured out, if I use this function and I make h closer and closer and closer to zero, it will give me the first derivative. Now, the reason why we're left with x values is we are finding the general tangent slope when we're finding the first derivative. So you know, like, if you wanted the tangent slope at 2, you would get like 7 or a half or 4. Like you get a slope, correct? Are we finding it at a specific value or are we finding the tangent slope at a specific value? No. We're finding the tangent slope for all the tangent slopes. So that's why you'll still have x's left in your equation once you find the first derivative. Then if I wanted the tangent slope at x equals 7, you could just plug it in and give me the tangent slope at 7. If I wanted 10, you could now do that. If I wanted 3, you could now do that because you have an x sitting in front of you. So you're finding the general tangent slope right now, the first derivative. Okay? So, we do the limit as h approaches 0. And then I'm going to, if you want to do the f of x plus h off to the side, 
you have to write f of x plus h equals so that the person who is marking your, mark, your work, which is me or a prof or some other random human who is prof paid, um, to do this, you have to show them that you actually found f of x plus h off to the side by labeling it as f of x plus h equals. Yes? Do we need to do the f prime x? Yes. Okay. All right. So we are going to go off to the side and go f of x plus h equals. And if you don't have that and you're just doing math off to the side and you insert it in for f of x plus h, you have not at all showed them that you found f of x plus h. Correct? So you off to the side, you say f of x plus h equals and you do the math. Yeah. Can you do it in the actual equation? You can do it in the equation if you want. It's just going to be hecka long. Okay. I'm using my word hecka. It's, it's, it's a 10 cent word. All right. So we're going to get negative 3 x plus h squared plus 4 x plus h minus 2. And then remember, x plus h squared. Oh, now you switched to. Oh, whatever. Okay. Uh, x plus h. So we're going to get negative 3 x squared. x h x h is 2 x h plus h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus 2. Distribute this negative 3 through, so we get negative 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus 2. And then we can put that in. But we can't put that in for f of x plus h unless we actually label it f of x plus h, correct? All right, so that's going to go in f of x plus h. So we get negative 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus 2 minus that whole thing. So I'm going to minus negative 3x squared, so I get plus 3x squared. Then I'm going to minus 4x. And then I'm going to minus a minus 2. So I get plus 2. Can you do it in two steps where you put the minus and then the brackets? Yeah, are you on a phone? Yeah, should you be? No? Okay, cool. Glad we got there. Okay, so when I talk to you about limits, and we, it's not you. I like how you guys thought it was both of you, but it was them. It's, it's often you. So I see why you went there. All right, so H um, denominator can't equal 0. We agree? If I plug in right now, I have a problem, correct? So I told you that when you're doing any of these, when we're using this principle, that we have to cancel off every single term that doesn't have an H because we're going to be able to take GCF out an H, cancel the H's off, and then we're good. If they don't cancel off, you have problems. So I have a positive 2 and negative 2. I have a 4X, doesn't have an H, so I need to have another one that goes with it. I have a 3X squared, it doesn't have an H, it needs to cancel. And then whatever's left over has to have H's. So now I'm going to do the limit as h approaches 0. I still write h approaches 0 because I haven't gotten rid of the h. And until I can substitute in for h, I have to keep writing that. So I take an h out. I'm left with negative 6x minus 3h plus 4 all over h. They cancel off. The problem is gone. And then I can substitute in. So I get negative 6x minus 3 times 0 plus 4. You need to show your math. You cannot just say, oh, it's negative 6x plus 4 and never substitute in. That is not what this is making you do. You need to show this step. And then after you have negative 6x plus 4. So what we really found was the general slope tangent slope So for this graph. What is a tangent slope? It means if I had a quadratic like this, that one's concave down, so this is not the same graph, obviously. And I asked you for the tangent slope here, or the equation of the tangent slope, it's going to touch in one spot. So it's going to go like this, or it could be more vertical. What it does is it gives you what the slope of this line is for that. So this is the general tangent slope, because I could fill in any x right now and get out its tangent slope that would cause it to only touch in one spot on that graph. Okay? And you'll see why the heck we look for tangent slopes later. Um, for now, for the whole next unit, we're going to be finding all these first derivatives, finding tangent slopes. And then the next unit, we use all those tangent slopes to find increasing, decreasing maxes and mins and concavity and inflections and be able to draw graphs that are calculated. Okay. Now this one, we have the limit. As h approaches 0, I need f prime of x, and I don't know why I didn't write that, equals. Find the first derivative tangent slope. 
of root 2 x plus h minus 3 minus this all over h. So I have the limit as h approaches 0 of root 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus root 2x minus 3 all over h. Multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to get that's going 2x plus 2h minus 3 plus root 2x minus 3. We multiply conjugates and we leave apart the ones that are not conjugates because if we distribute that h through, we're not going to get it back. So we're going to get 2x plus 2, ooh, Crystal, equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus 2x minus 3. You can show the middle terms if you want, but when you show them, just put them in brackets, multiply together, right, under the radical. Don't distribute them. Um, all over h. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus 2x plus 3 all over h times that. left with 2 over 2x plus 2 times 0 minus 3 for that plus square root 2x minus 3 which equals 2 over 2 root 2x minus 3. What happens? They cancel. So it's 1 over root 2x. <laughs> We're finishing the other ones tomorrow. Um, I also want you to do the front page of this, just so you know this graph goes to this one straight across, and this, 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 Six questions are for more tomorrow. The front page. Here, just look at a graph. Give me some All right.